finish our series on exponential functions. We're going to look at an example in which we can use an exponential function to model a set of data that has already been given to us. Here's our example. The value of a computer n years after it is purchased is given by this table. We want to determine what's a good equation that we could use to model this scenario. We also want to determine what's the value of our computer going to be after 10 years. And then can we determine the most likely purchase price? That last one's an interesting point because if you notice, our table doesn't include an initial value. An initial value would happen when the x value, or in this case the n value, would equal zero. But our first value on the table is actually after one full year. So the value of our computer after one year is $1,200. This question doesn't explicitly say that we need to use an exponential function in order to model this, but let's look at some other scenarios first quickly to see if they might be a better option. We would know that a linear model is the most appropriate model if the first differences are all the same. And if we look down the value column here of our table, we can see that the first differences are actually going to be quite different. From 1200 down to 960, this is going to be a difference of $240. Whereas from 960 down to 768, this is only a difference of $192. And if we continue on downwards, this is a difference of $154. We can see that these first differences are not going to be the same. So a linear model probably wouldn't work. In order for it to be a quadratic model, our model would have to have the same second differences. So if we took the first differences of all of our values and then took the first differences of the first differences, which we call the second differences, they would all need to be the same. But that's not going to work for this table of values either. So how do we determine whether an exponential model is the best fit? Well, to do that, we don't want to look at first differences or second differences. We actually want to know what is the increase or decrease in value as a rate. Or another way to say that is, what do you multiply to get from one value to the other value? And is that consistent as we go? So from 1200 all the way to 960, what did we multiply to 1200 in order to get to 960? How do we mathematically solve that? To do that, you work backwards and you say, okay, if I have 960 and I needed to multiply something to 1200 to get to 960, the opposite operation is to divide. So what's 960 divided by 1200? Well, you're going to get your calculator out and you're going to plug in 960 divided by 1200 and we see the answer is 0 0.8. So 0 0.8. We're going to do the same thing with the value changing from 960 all the way to 768. What rate did we use on 960 in order to get to 768? So we'll take 768 and we'll divide it by 960. So 768 divided by 960 and again we get 0 0.8. This is good news because if all of these are the same that means that the best model will be an exponential model with this value here being our rate of growth or our rate of decay. Essentially the B value in the equation for an exponential function. It turns out that all of these do have a rate of decay that's pretty close to 0 0.8. So as it stands right now, our equation can look like this. V at n equals some initial value which we don't know yet, a b value which is 0 0.8, and of course an exponent x. And the only thing we don't know yet is this a value. Well how do we get this a value? We essentially have to work backwards. If we know that after two years it was $960, one year it was $1,200, and we know that the rate it's decaying by is 0 0.8, or it's decaying by 20% per year, or we can also say that it's keeping 80% of its value per year, we can use that backwards thinking to then try to go and figure out 
well, what would it be in year zero? So let's see how we take this and then get to year zero. Well, I guess we have to ask ourselves, how do we get from 960 all the way to 1200? 960 times what gets us to 1200? Well, here's another way to think about that. We know that 1200 times 0 0.8 equals 960. Well, we can say that this 0 0.8 if we divide it on both sides, so we cancel it here and we divide it over here, 1200 has to equal 960 divided by our rate of decay, or 0 0.8. So that's how we get from here to here. We divide this number by 0 0.8, it gets us to 1200. So how do we then get to the year zero value? Well, that's easy. We're gonna take 1200 and divide it by 0 0.8 getting our calculator out, 1200 divided by 0 0.8, $1,500. And that will be our initial purchase price when the number of years is at zero. Let's now use Desmos to give us a quick representation of that example that we just looked at. On the left here, we have a table of values that are the same points that we looked at in the previous table of values. And they're already plotted here on the graph. Desmos has this really cool function called regression. Essentially what it can do is it can do a proper fit for whatever type of function you'd like to fit this curve and it'll tell you if it's a good fit or not. And so when I fit an exponential curve onto here, this is what it looks like. You can see that it goes through pretty much every point right on. Another neat thing is it gives us our initial value. It shows us that we have an initial value here of 1500 when n is equal to zero. On the left here, you can also see that it gives us our b value. The b value here is 0 0.79999, which is very, very close to 0 0.8. The reason it's not exactly 0 0.8 is because when we get to some of the lower values here, like from three to four and four to five, the rate of decay is not quite 0 0.8. It's slightly less. But to fit a good model, we can use the approximation of 0 0.8, and that's going to be a pretty good fit. So let's now write out the equation that we found for our model. V at n equals our initial value of 1500 multiplied by our rate, 0 0.8, and then to the exponent of x, or I guess in this case n. There, that fits over top of that orange curve that we had there. We can now use this model to tell us what will the computer's value be in 10 years. Let's first take a quick look at the graph and we'll go all the way to 10 here. And when n is 10, it looks like our graph should be somewhere around the 161.1 .1 range or $161.10. In order to use our function and to do that algebraically, uh, Desmos can do this in two ways. We can say, what is the value after 10? And it will give us the answer, 161.06. It's actually more exact than what the graph showed. Or instead, we could write our equation here, v at n, or just sorry, v equals, and then we'll put in our equation, 1500 times 0 0.8 to the exponent. And now because we know n is 10, we'll put in the 10. And it gives us, gives us the same result, $161.06. Your computer's not gonna be worth very much 10 years after you buy it. In fact, I'd be surprised if this trend continued and it was even worth $161. Maybe just the case could be worth that much. But who knows, in this day and age with the way technology is going, these rates may not be exactly what the reality is. So there is a great example of how we can use exponential models to help us model or fit a curve onto a set of data that looks like or appears to be exponential. Ooh.